technology can work in the most mysterious ways that you can possibly imagine. The lethal weapon we are going to talk about today is none other than Project Thor. With the US Space Force getting into action already, the US will try its best to get hold of as much of the world as it can, and it will be easier to do so from outer space. While the 1967 Outer Space Treaty prohibits the US from developing nuclear, biological or chemical weapons in space, what they didn't count on was the US Air Force's most simple weapon ever, a tungsten rod that could hit a city with the explosive power of an intercontinental ballistic missile. This new weapon does not fall under the category of either one of those, and promises to deliver strikes more powerful than many types of nuclear and chemical attack, while avoiding the unfavorable fallout which follows nuclear strikes. So what is Project Thor? Well, to summarize the entire concept, at the moment it is seen as a project that is potentially overshadowing the Moog as the deadliest non-nuclear weapon in the US arsenal. Project Thor is a technology developed by Jerry Pornell back in the 50s with the goal of obliterating enemies with bolts from above. This type of kinetic energy penetrator, KEP, would potentially consist of a pair of satellites. One acts as a targeting center and the other is fitted with 20-foot-long tungsten rods that will be dropped from orbit to the target. Capable of penetrating hundreds of feet into the surface of the planet, these thunderbolts from Thor will cause damage equal to a nuclear explosion without the fallout. So how will this work from space? The rod itself would fall with such speed that it would penetrate hundreds of feet into the Earth, destroying any potential hardened bunkers or secret underground sites. It's not known as the rods from God for no reason. More than that, when the rod hits, the explosion would be on par with the magnitude of a ground-penetrating nuclear weapon. But the catch here is that it would happen with no fallout. Such a weapon could destroy a target with 15 minutes notice. Though these rods will not carry warheads, they will strike at approximately up to 10 times the speed of sound, allowing them to cause tremendous damage with the sheer speed of their impact. These rods will be basically fired from American satellites present in space to specific sites that will be guarded for the safety of the common people living around. The concept is not radically different from the one behind a railgun. The projectile uses no explosives, relying instead on its immense speed. Remember the net force is only mass times acceleration to annihilate whatever target it hits. While the railgun accelerates the projectile using electromagnetic energy, Project Thor depends on the potential energy of Earth's gravity. It just lets go and lets them fall. As far as the cost of the project is concerned, one thing to determine here is that there is no possibility that there will be any way to make it cheaper. According to experts who calculated the cost of this project, the cost of raising objects to space will be $10,000 per pound, suggesting that 200 cubic feet of tungsten rod, which weighs more than 10,000 kilograms due to the density of the rod, would cost around $230 million per rod to orbit. This volume is several times the price of traditional and nuclear bunker busters. Compared to defense's projected cost of $212.5 million apiece for the next generation of intercontinental ballistic missiles proposed by the Air Force, the gap seems almost insignificant, particularly when the possibility of nuclear fallout is excluded from the equation. A core takeaway from the concept of weapons like Project Thor's is that hypersonic weapons pack a significant punch and may be the future of global warfare. Although other nations, including Russia and China, have urged the US to sign an international legally binding treaty for the prevention of of arms race in outer space, Washington has firmly rejected such treaties. This lack of respect for international disarmament reappeared in Trump's threat to dismantle the Intermediate Range Nuclear Powers Treaty INF, a 1987 document banning nuclear arms with very limited alert times. Even back in 2014, the US rejected the draft treaty of the prevention of missiles from outer space and the threat of use of force against outer space objects PPWT, on the grounds that it was fundamentally flawed because it did not include ground-based weapons. And now with the establishment of an official space force, Project Thor is becoming an inherent truth. People like the German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov have made overtures to renew talks on the INF Treaty as well as a new Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, START, which aims at general arms reduction and to begin to take seriously the threat of space-based weapons. We are very concerned about the danger of the transformation of outer space into a sphere of armed confrontation. This subject has become more and more worrisome recently, Lavrov said at a news conference. Space weapons and autonomous weapons will soon no longer be science fiction, but a possible reality, Mass said in an interview on Wednesday. We need rules that keep pace with the technological development of new weapon systems. 
Such deployments may also lead rival powers to seek and retaliate by deploying similar systems of their own, potentially kicking off an arms race in space. The psychological impact of deploying these weapons, which even with air bases taken out of service will still be able to deliver strikes from altitudes of tens of thousands of kilometers, may in and of itself make Project Thor a worthwhile investment for the US. However, it is very surprising to see we spend millions of dollars on weaponry than on a good cause.